Nehemiah 3, verse 29. <clears throat> We're looking at looking into the east gate on verse 29. He says, After them repaired Zodok, the son of Amir, over against his house. After him repaired also Shemaiah, the son of Shechaniah, the keeper of the east gate. And that's what we're talking about tonight, is the east gate. If you look at your map, it's pretty easy to find if you go east of the temple. That's where it's located. Just east of the temple. At that gate, if you kept going east outside the city, you would end up getting into the Mount of Olives. Very significant place. You remember that through scripture. This east gate is also known, if you read it somewhere in your word, as the Golden Gate. It's also known as the Beautiful Gate. You remember that from scripture? There was a lame man laid at the gate called Beautiful. There you go, the east gate. That's what we're looking at. It's very significant where it lies at. Zechariah 14.4 says, And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem, in the east. Okay? Very significant, this east gate. Uh, very prophetical, uh, what we see in the east gate. One of the things that's going to happen at this east gate is Jesus will return. The thought is, through Scripture, some commentators go back and forth with it, but Jesus returned and entered Jerusalem through the east gate. Okay, very significant gate. This gate speaks of the return of Jesus, the Messiah, the King, the Judge, and the Lord of all. That's what we're looking at tonight as we look at this east gate or the golden gate or the beautiful gate. In our Christian life and walk, it shows our need to live with this blessed assurance, this blessed hope, and to long for his return. Spiritually speaking, that's what we're doing tonight in this East Gate, is constantly looking forward to the hope of his return. Now, I want you to understand, hope in the Christian life is different from hope in the world. Hope in the world is not definite. Hope as a Christian is definite. It's a looking to looking forward to, okay? That's how I look, just seem to think about it when you say the blessed hope, which is the, the Lord Jesus, that blessed, it's not that I'm not sure if he's coming, it's I can't wait till he gets here. That's the difference between biblical hope and worldly hope. Worldly hope says, I hope it rains on my garden tomorrow. Biblical hope says, I can't wait till he gets here. You see, that's the hope. It's a hope that's going to happen. Those who truly look to his coming receive a crown as a reward. Did you know that? Those who are looking at towards his coming, okay? Looking forward to that coming. 2 Timothy says this in four, four, chapter 4, uh, verse 8. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So not only was Paul talking about he's going to get a crown, the people looking forward to it will too. Ain't that awesome? Yeah. So the, the inference there is you need to be looking for it. Don't be trying to play it away. See, a lot of people ain't looking for the Christ. They're looking for the Antichrist, and they're looking for the end sign signs and all these things. Well, if you just keep your eyes open, you're going to see end time signs. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's not like you got to look real hard. They're there. It's not like you don't want to look at them. Jesus told you what they were going to be, so it's okay. You can see them, but that's not who I'm looking for. Right. I'm looking for the Christ, you see. But too many people get hung up on looking for other things. Oh, we got this going on. Oh, we got that going on. Yep, you're right. But I ain't seen Jesus yet, and I ain't going to stop. He said, you've got to occupy till I come. 
and occupy that that word we don't have time tonight but that word means a whole lot it's a deep word it's a, it's a rich word to occupy something we're supposed to be doing something in that we're supposed to be looking for him but along with our looking we're going to be working you see that's the difference Jesus' return is definite and sure but not all will take it seriously turn over there in Matthew 24 if you would please Matthew chapter 24. <clears throat> the hope that we talked about as a Christian is definite. Jesus' return is definite. It's sure. But do you realize that not all will take it seriously? Not all is going to take this seriously. Look at Matthew 24, verse 37. But as the days of Noah were so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Not everybody takes it serious that the time is short. Not everybody takes it serious that Jesus is coming back. And Jesus here, mine is in red. Amen. Jesus speaks here of a time that they didn't take serious and they all perished. All but eight souls. Jesus speaks here of a time that looked normal, but something was spoken that didn't seem normal was going to happen. Noah preached to them, what was it, 120 years worth of, it's going to rain. What you doing, Noah? I'm building a boat. What well, we need a boat for? But it's going to rain. What's rain? You see, that guy's a kook. We don't pay no attention to him. So we're going to keep on marrying and giving in marriage. You know what that's a picture of? You ever wondered that? People are marrying and giving in marriage. You're either getting married or you're giving one out to be married. I'm either getting married or I'm giving my daughter to be married. You see that? That pretty much sums up everybody, right? You're either being married, getting married, whatever. Just going along with your own daily things, eating and drinking, giving in marriage until the day that no one enters the ark. Until that day, they did this. So if you're looking for everybody to get on board with what your evangelical mind says today, and then tomorrow everybody's just going to be going and kumbaya, right? It ain't going to happen. Because just in the days of Noah, so will the day that the Son of Man comes, right? When did they find this out? The day that Noah entered the ark. It also says in verse 39, and knew not. It means they didn't listen and didn't think it was going to come to, uh, come to pass until the flood came and took them all away. You know, some of them didn't realize what was going on until their family was swept away with the flood water. That's when they realized. Ooh. But to look back at the boat, it's done floated, and the door is shut. Mm. And you ain't going to get in. Sure. Now, just as in the days of Noah, that's the key. Just as in the days of Noah, first of all, that makes me want to find out how it was in the days of Noah. I just told you. They didn't know nothing until the door was shut, and people were wiped away. They felt the first raindrop, and went, hmm, what was that? Hmm, felt the second raindrop. I'd say by the time it got about ankle deep, they were getting worried. And it was too fast, too quick, and they were gone. Just as in the days of Noah, same thing. That's going to happen when he comes. They're going to wait till the last minute. Does that mean they're going to be okay? No. No. If you're lost when the Lord comes back and he's here, sorry about your luck. That's rude, 
Period. Now say it. Yeah. Also true. It's true. I'm not the guy that's going to stand up here, pat you on the back, say, live in your sin and do what you want. And yes, your theology is all over the map. You don't believe in the Christ. You think he's an angelic being. It's all good, but God to hash it out. Ain't no hashing out. You better find it out right now. Because just in the days of no, it's going to happen. You see, he's coming back. That's a definite. Mm. Let's turn to Ezekiel 44. And we're looking at verse 1 to 3. Ezekiel 44, verses 1 to 3. Then he brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary which looketh towards the east, and it was shut. Then said the Lord unto me, This gate shall be shut. It shall not be opened, and no man shall enter in by it, because the Lord, the God of Israel, has entered in by it. Therefore it shall be shut. It is, there, it is for the prince, the prince he shall sit in it, to eat and bre eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate and shall go out by way of the same gate. Mm. Mm. Now commentators say, well, that's not this prince and that's not that prince. This is a prophetic East Gate uh, prophecy of, of, of the East Gate that Jesus came in. You remember when he came in on that glorious day on donkey oh, mm -hmm. that we're getting ready to celebrate yeah. in another, what, two weeks or so? Mm -hmm. I think it's two weeks. Mm -hmm. There's your east gate. That's where he came in. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. The east gate is not to be opened until Jesus, the Messiah, returns back. Ezekiel speaks about it. To get today, this gate, in Jerusalem is blocked and mortared, shut, and has been since the 16th century. So since the 1500s, it's still been sealed. Still been sealed. One day he's coming back. Yeah. One day he's coming back. Hmm. Back then. In 1541, to be exact, the Turkish sultan named Suleiman the Magnificent. Mm -hmm. He was a Muslim. Sealed up the east gate with blocks of stone. With the same stone that I'm reading about this, the same stone that's on the ground, all the shell rock and that kind of stone, same stones mortared all up. The Muslim sultan sealed this gate knowing the prophecy of Ezekiel 44 that you just read. He did that knowing that prophecy that that Messiah would return through this gate and reign as king. I'm not giving my kingship up for some king that's coming. I'm going to go ahead and seal the door. Isn't that amazing? That he sealed the door shut because he was, he was understood that, and the, this is what gets me, I'm reading the same thing he read, in 1541. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. That he read a prophecy that says, um, there's a king coming, and he's coming back through the same way he went out of. He's coming back again. Mm -hmm. Wow. Block it up. Because I'm not giving my kingship up. And the thing about it is, did he know when he was coming? That's why he did. If he'd have said, in 2025, king's coming back, this sultan would have been like, leave it open. We got a long way on the gate gone. But he didn't know when it was coming. Right. So he blocked it up. Because it could have been the next day. He didn't know. Right? Mm -hmm. He blocked it up. Because the reigning king was coming. 
He thought that blocking off the gate would keep the Lord Jesus out. Hmm. He even built a, this is what gets me. He even built a cemetery out in front of the gate to prevent any Jewish priest or prophet of God proclaiming the message of Jesus that he would return, that he wouldn't pass around. Because see, if you went around the cemetery, that was unclean. So he put a cemetery out front of the gate to keep any prophecy away. So if you were a prophet of God and you're going to proclaim the message that Jesus is coming, here he comes, make way the path because here comes Jesus. You're not going to do that because that cemetery is there. We'd all be unclean, so now we just have to stop. So not only do I shut the worldly way off, which is a gate, I'm also going to shut off all his prophets that they can't be talking about. Because now you don't want to go to the gate and talk about it. You can't. You're going to be unclean. You see. The sultan had it all figured out, didn't he? And he was a Muslim? He's a Muslim. He was a Muslim Her sultan. view of Jesus, of him acting that way, was kind of... Yeah. Well, he wouldn't have known it being Jesus. Necessarily. Yeah. He wouldn't have looked at it as right. Jesus. He would have looked at it as the king. The king. That's, that's what stuck in his mind was the king. Gotcha. You see. Yeah. I look at it as Jesus is coming. I don't think he did. I think he's seen the kingship. He's your king. That's why he's yeah. the king. I think. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. He thought that keeping the word out would keep Jesus out. That's why he kept the people away. Why do you think churches keep preaching preachers out? Because they figured it's just going to start something. Yeah, it's called revival. Why do you think they want to keep the Bible out? Well, because it's going to start something. Yes, revival. Why do you want to keep the blood out of your sermons? Because it's going to start something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, revival. You see, men have been doing that since way before this guy, and he's, they're doing it now. And they're going to keep on doing that. Because they figure if they can keep the word out, they can keep Jesus out. Let me tell you something. He's went this long. Getting through the barricades man's tried to put up. He'll keep going. You can't stop him. No. You can't stop him. Look at the book that you're holding. How many wars has the book been through? You know? How many people tried to get rid of this and it always sustains? Right? It always does. It will. Jesus is pushing it through. He's going to get through. He's going to be there. So they were trying to keep the word out, but look over at Matthew 24. Again, we're going back to Matthew. We're going to do a little camping out in Matthew, but Jesus has a lot to say about this. <clears throat> Matthew 24, verse 35, said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour no man knoweth, knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. That Sultan didn't know when he was coming back. He's like, do it. Do it. Because I don't know when this king's coming, but do it. And I don't want nobody over here talking to people and saying, hey, another king is coming. Hey, another king is coming. I don't want them saying that. So these Jewish people ain't going to go past the cemetery, so let's put a cemetery out there. Mm -hmm. We do the same things today to keep God out of place. We're going to go ahead and take the Ten Commandments out of the school, and now we can't talk about it either. You know what they did? They tried blocking up the wall now and, and putting a, basically a place where they can't speak it. The only bad thing is, is people listen. Right. It's time to tear down the wall. Amen. It's time to tear down the wall. Churches don't want to be speaking the gospel. Don't be speaking sin. Don't be saying sin. Now, that hurts people's feelings. Don't, don't, don't be talking about this butcher block gospel that talks about, you know, the blood and all the killings and that. Don't do that. So if we can keep them quiet, we can keep them happy. Do you know I'm not sad, I'm not, I'm not so concerned about your happiness? No more than you're concerned about mine. I'm not concerned about nobody's happiness. 
You know, Jesus isn't concerned. And you know, one of the heretical things that, that goes on in this world is always talking about, well, Jesus wants me happy. No, Jesus wants you holy. That's one of the saddest things I ever hear come out of people's mouths. Well, Jesus wants us happy. Does he? Does he want you happy? I'm sure that's not on his top 10 list. If it made the top 25. Holiness. He wants you saved. He wants you separated. He wants you glorified when it's over. You see. Happiness comes. But it can also go. Holiness is there. You see. That's the difference. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. When people today, I'm going to tell you something now. I've done seen, this is funny. I've, I've done seen this today, even on a video, uh, doing some studying and stuff going through online. There's guys online today. 2024, 2025, end of the world. Well, who told you that? I want to know. Jesus coming back in next year. How come I didn't get the email? Eight months after the election. After, how come I didn't get the email? I don't understand. When people are starting to put themselves in there, I, listen, most of them will say, I, God spoke to me in a dream. He may, but he didn't give you no date. What makes you better than him? Because he don't even know. Right. Wow. Dude lives in Kentucky and got a revelation that Jesus is coming on this, this day. And Jesus didn't even know it. Right. Man. Mm -hmm. Just know he's coming. I ain't worried about the date. Matter of fact, I, I, if it's a mine, I'd say now. Do it now. Do it right now. The only thing that stops me from wanting to say that is people aren't ready. It breaks my heart. Not everybody's But I got news for you. When the bolt uh, doors open, I'm not worried about looking back trying to yell at people, come on, I'm on I don't know if you can be rude getting on there, but I'm going to be elbowing to get there. You see, you ain't seen a Black Friday sale like that. He's coming back. He's coming back. But don't get hung up on, and you're going to see a lot of it. I was listening to a pastor earlier today. He said, I've never in my life seen so much false teachings false preachings and false prophecy things that's going on that don't match biblically at all and can be debunked in every way possible. There's no way. And he said, I I've never seen so much in my life. And social media has a hand in that. Because now that we've got this social media that nobody can live without, you just got so much of it. And well, Satan don't just go and say, well, I'm not going to Anywhere he can get in and he's going to go. So you give him a window of getting on whatever it is, he'll go. you got to be vigilant. you got to know what Jesus says because that's the author and that's the finisher. You see? Right. You know, talking about this gate, ironically, there's two occasions through the, the times past. In 1917 and 1968, man kept trying to attempt to open up this east gate and go through. But every time they did, uh, something prevented it, whether it was uh, an event, like a war started, or whatever was going on. It always stopped them. It won't be open until God says it's time. He's not coming back until God says it's time. I don't know it, it, it's not going to matter what I do or you do that. God's going to do it in his time. I just know this. We're supposed to occupy until that time. 
we're supposed to be busy working while we're waiting. There's a sermon in that. You need to be working while you're waiting. Too many people are busy waiting instead of working. Because not everybody's going to be in that number to receive. And, and we need to keep occupying. This gate is very close to the horse gate that we went over last week. Remember a picture of wars, battles? This gate is very close to the horse gate of battles. We must endure until the coming of Jesus. Endure it. It's going to be. Remember when Jesus says you're going to hear rumors of wars and rumors of wars and all. Things is going to amp up. Yeah. Are they amped up now? They're getting pretty amped. You see. My only thing is, is if you grew up in a third world country that all they do as soon as you have a child is put a rifle in his hand, it's been amped up for all kinds of years. Maybe getting amped up over here. But see, here in America, we have this idea that everything surrounds America. No. No, 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 no. I don't situate myself trying to prove the Bible with what America is doing. I prove the Bible with the Bible. Right. I put myself not here, but anywhere. The prophecy that Jesus is coming back is just as relative to an American than it is a Haitian. And believe me, they're going through it right now. Or someone that's uh, any third, in Africa, anywhere. The gospel is the same. The prophecy is the same. Jesus coming back is still the same, regardless of where you're at. So if you're constantly looking for your surroundings to see, oh, it's getting bad, this must be this and this must be that, stop and think, is it like this somewhere else? Right. I don't know. But I do know this. It's going to get amped up. The horse gate's pretty close. Always going out to battle. This is a great picture because it's getting amped up. And the closer it gets, your personal battles will get worse too, don't you think? Think about this. Because as evil starts getting worse and he's working overtime, because his time is short, the word says. His time is short. He knows it. He's amped up. His little minions are amped up. And he's going to come against you even more. So your battles, those spiritual battles we talked about last week, those are going to get amped up. Which means you're going to have to stay with the armor of God on all the time. All the time. Hmm. John 14 says this Let not your heart be troubled You believe in God Believe in also in me Right In my father's house are many mansions If it were not so I would have told you And I go to prepare a place for you And if I go to prepare a place for you I will come again And receive you unto myself that where I am, mm -hmm. there you may be also. Amen. Do I know when he's coming back? I have no idea. Yep. Do I know he is? I guarantee it. Yep. Mm -hmm. He's taking me with him. But I'm not worried about it. The reason is because he's been preparing something. He's already prepared my, my way. He's already prepared the life and the truth. He's already prepared everything that I'm needing. He's just waiting on the word go, and I'm gone. Because he's coming to get me. And where he is, there I will be also. There's a lot of people out there getting hung up on, well, what happens when between death and then you're going and the Lord comes back? And what about the rapture, this and that? First of all, go read the letters to the Thessalonians. Paul explains it. But other than that, brothers and sisters, I don't care where I'm at, but I know I'm with him. Yes. Right. Wherever he goes, I'm going. You ever seen the child that's attached to mama's leg? Think about this. Mm -hmm. That you can't get, I mean, mama walks from living room to the kitchen and the child, maybe he's just a crawler. Maybe he just crawls. The whole time he's just crawling and crying. The whole time, go to mama's leg. Mm -hmm. Mama turns around to go to the laundry room 
and the child gets down and cries some more. And everywhere that mama goes, that's where he goes. I don't do that no more. <laughs> I used to, but I don't no more. But you know, wherever mama was at, that's where the child was at. And I think about this when, I, when I'm reading that where I am, you will be also. Wherever he's at, I'm there. And I'm not just trying to get him. I'm with him. Because he's taking me with him. He's taking me. He's taking you. That believe in Jesus Christ. That are saved and born again by the blood that he shed. Let me tell you something. Wherever he's going, he's taking his children. He's taking them with him. Isn't that beautiful? That you don't have to worry about trying to crawl to the kitchen fast enough because mama done went. And oh no, she's moving again. And then the whole time she's going, what you just... Said I'll be done in a minute. No, it's none of that. And none of that. Because he's got me. And I'm coming with him. And I'm not trying to catch up to him. I'm already there. Beautiful. So I'm not going to sit here and argue about, well, this is what the Bible, we're going to be here, we're going to be there, we're going to be, then they got the whole soul sleep situation going on and all that. <clears throat> Fringe. I'm going to stay on the green. Stay on the green. Mm -hmm. When you play golf, you want on the green. You don't want on the fringe. I used to stay in the woods, but you don't want on the fringe. You want on the green. That's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be with Jesus. The most important part of this whole scenario. Right? That's right. <clears throat> Where I am, you shall be also. No. I mean, how, how? We would end most heated debates with what us amongst the church if it would just stop and read just a small print that says where I am you will be also. Together, yeah. That kind of nullifies all the arguments going on, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, we're sitting around trying to beat our heads in the wall about theology. Well, this is what this one says and this is what that one says and this is what, you know what man, I know what Jesus says. I'm going to be and in Matthew 24, we'll close the study out. It's in, in verses 30, 31. <clears throat> and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of the heaven, and power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. He's coming back. He done told us he's going to do this. He's coming back to gather his family. He's coming back to gather those who trusted him. Why would he not come back? Did he save you just to stay here and, 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 and disappear? Did he save you just to be here and, and, and then poof, you're gone and nothing but worm food? No. He saved you because you're his. He's coming back. That's the only way you could have been saved was through him. He knew it. He did it. And he's going to come through with the word. Hmm. From one end of heaven to the other. Matthew 24, fourth to fifth says, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Mm. Mm. Take heed that no man deceive you. Don't let nobody talk you out of Jesus coming. Right. Don't let nobody talk you out of getting on the, the, uh, the argument train mm. about, well, I don't know about how do you know he really, because he said it. And even if I didn't believe it, it's still true. Because God said it. He's coming back. People don't want to hear that. Because they didn't want to hear he came the first time. What makes you think people want to hear he's coming back the second time? They didn't want to hear about what he did when he was here. They don't want to hear anything about coming back and what he's going to do when he comes back. People just don't. And as the days of Noah... They'll be eating and drinking and going on and going to football games and going to basketball games and they'll be doing all their normal stuff. Think about that. 
You ever been asked and the old preachers used to say, where are you going to be when the Lord comes back? Where will you be found doing when the Lord comes back? Well, I was at home on the couch. On a Sunday morning, y'all don't like them people down there. Where was you at today? I was at a ball game. Why not? Why wasn't you in the church house? It's a Wednesday night. You should be supporting your local church. I was at a ball game. I don't like them people down there. Wasn't nobody coming no way on a Wednesday. Why should I come? Hmm. What are you going to be excuse? What will you use when the Lord finds you doing something other than what he said to occupy? What will we be doing? Hmm. That's the question at hand. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And there was. In the days that Jesus was there, there was many people came and said that they were the, the chosen one, the, the Christ to come, the Messiah. But it always went to nothing. Yeah. Always went to nothing. Remember when Peter and them were, were brung in and they had a big meeting, you know, the religious people, and they're like, hey, hey, hey. I think it was Camellia that said, yeah. hey, uh, if, if they're of God, or if they're not of God, they'll be no different than anybody else that's come through there and saying, let's go. Yeah. It ain't going to be no big deal. Poof, they'll be gone. Yeah. But if they are of God, right. you better leave them alone. That's right. Yeah, it was the, the main one. Yeah. If they're of God, and this whole Jesus is coming back thing is true, you better heed it. Yeah. If it wasn't, it would show proof that nothing coming before that. But I don't know where you're going to find the proof that he wasn't true. He, was, he came, he was, he was put on a cross, he was buried, and he rose three days later. He's changing people. He, if you're saved, he's changing you. You should know your own testimony that my God is real. And if he said that I would come to him, he would save me, and he's done that, why do I think he won't be doing what he said when he came back? Keep preaching, keep occupying, <clears throat> and keep an eye on the eastern gate, because Jesus is coming back through it. And you say, well, for real? Yeah, for real. Yeah, for real. That's what the word has said. So remember the east gate, the golden gate, and the beautiful gate.